Dr. Nair has a new procedure that she's going to be doing this next week. And Dr. Nair, I'm going to give them, uh, first of all, the link to pass around. And, and Alyssa has the actual pacemaker, which is the smallest pacemaker in the world, right? So the link um, that Jason has is a little tiny implantable monitor. It's about the size of a AAA battery. So it's a little tiny chip. Uh, that we insert under the skin. So if you think of having a uh, heart rhythm problems, your symptoms are usually uh, palpitations, your heart fluttering, or passing out spells, or lightheaded spells, and things of that sort. And sometimes the only way for us to find out what is going on with your heart rhythm is if you have a monitor on you. The traditional monitors are monitors that we stick on your chest and has little wires coming out and you carry the monitor around. And some of these monitors, you know, we are limited by the duration of those monitors that we can keep on you. Sometimes we do a 24-hour monitor. Sometimes we'll do a 48-hour monitor. Sometimes a 30-day monitor. We might even go up to two months, but then it becomes hard for us to do a monitor more than two months. So that's where the implantable monitors come into play. These implantable monitors are little chips that once we put under the skin, they have a battery life for about three years. So we're expecting that you know you will have an episode within that three years, and if if you do have any kind of heart rhythm problem, the monitor will pick it up and it wirelessly transmits that information to us, so we know what's going on with the heart rhythm at that time. Now, if you had an episode, and you know say you passed out, you would wake up and you would push that button that comes with the monitor, and that would tell us that you actually had a spell. So we would know what your heart was doing when you were actually having an episode. So it's a very important diagnostic tool for us. Now, it doesn't do anything else other than telling us what was wrong with your heart's rhythm. And then at that point, we figure out what's the best treatment for you. Now, Alyssa is passing on the world's smallest pacemaker. Uh, now, traditional pacemakers are little devices that we put under the skin right up in the chest. And we pass wires all the way up to the heart and screw those wires into your heart. Now, the problem with the traditional pacemakers is that you have wires inside your heart. Uh, the battery is under the skin up here. Um, so, you know, there are people who, there are some patients that don't prefer having things up here. There are certain patients that we cannot put wires inside their, inside their heart. Um, in those patients, uh, we would be starting to put in these uh, little, little uh, pacemakers. They're called leadless pacemakers because there are no wires going into the heart. Um, it's about the size of a, a vitamin E capsule. It's about this big is all it is. And the way we would do them uh, is by putting an IV in, your, uh, in the leg and putting a little tube up to the heart and putting that little capsule into the right bottom chamber of the heart. And that, ba that little capsule has a battery for about 12 years. And it will sense your heart rhythm and pace your heart when it's needed. Um, the, currently, it's only available to be implanted in one chamber of the heart. And the work is being done to make it mo better and bigger. So when I say bigger, it doesn't mean the size gets bigger. Uh, to be able to implant it in more than one chamber of the heart. So currently, we are only using it in patients who need what we call a single chamber pacemaker. So a wire in just one chamber of the heart. So if you have a pacemaker that has two wires, you're really not a candidate for it yet. But eventually, uh, it will come out as well. And it's called a Micra. Uh, Debbie, you want to mention the use of the link in people who have strokes of no Absolutely. apparent ideology? Absolutely. So Dr. Hill was asking about the use of links in people who have strokes. So, you know, when you have stroke, about 30 to 40 percent of the strokes can be from heart rhythm problems, and especially from rhythm problems such as atrial fibrillation. Now, some of it we will find out that you have atrial fibrillation when you come into the hospital with stroke, but that's only about 2 percent. The rest... 38 to 38 percent of patients, they do not have the heart rhythm problem when they actually get to the hospital. So the only way for us to find out if it was a heart rhythm problem that caused the stroke is sometimes with a device like the link. So once you have, you know, once someone has a stroke, if you cannot figure out why you had the stroke, it is an impo important diagnostic tool because it will help us figure out if you're having a heart rhythm problem that could have potentially cause the stroke. If it is, then you need to go on blood thinners so you can avoid uh, a future stroke and sometimes medications that can prevent the abnormal rhythm and sometimes procedures uh, such as ablation treatments that can prevent a future stroke. 